Welcome to the Italian Dolomites in January 2022. It's really nice. It's very quiet. I'm here at uh, actually Lago di Braes. Last time I was here in October, it was full of people. Today, it's actually just myself here and I've just met another photographer. He's just walking across what is actually now the frozen lake. So there's complete ice over the lake at the moment, which is quite nice. And uh, it's looking really kind of maybe a bit hazy this morning. So I was hoping for some kind of colour up in the sky, but it's not really happening, which is a shame. But um, what am I going to do here? Well, I'm actually going to film a regular type of vlog and I'm going to see if I can do a couple of tutorials when I'm here as well. So if you see a couple of things over the weeks and the scenery looks familiar, it's because it's from here. So... It's looking very, very nice here in the Dolomites. It's pretty nippy. It's minus nine right now, and every night it's going to be approximately the same overnight as well. It's quite easy driving around. I was quite surprised just how easy it is to drive around here this time of year. It's also really full with people overall. So in autumn, it's a bit of a shoulder season. Now is high season. So for me, it's my first time here in the winter enjoy Lago di Braes in the winter time and then you'll see many other locations coming up over the next seven days and I think maybe I'll split the vlog in two as well because otherwise it's going to be too long. Let's show you Lago di Braes. This is something that I took actually before a couple of other people arrived so um, there's a photographer at the moment actually stood in between here but I got my shot before he came so I've taken two exposures just so I can get the the blue that was in the sky a little bit earlier. There's a little bit of blue, there's a little bit now, but not too much. And then a foreground exposure as well. So I'm going to blend them together. Now, normally in autumn, this is all unfrozen. At the moment, you can walk all across this lake here, right out to the edge. I've seen a few people walk out there, but uh, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful location here and uh, there's many beautiful locations in the Dolomites as you're going to see. So I'm going to try and explore a couple of different places that I haven't been to but uh, this is Lago di Braes and um, it's looking good, it's looking good but I wish there was a bit more colour in the sky. Maybe it will happen but who we will see. I'll wait maybe another 15 minutes or so before heading off somewhere else. It's been a bit of a a long day today. I've been trying to do something actually and it's just not really gone as I expected because I was trying to find something that I'd seen a long time ago in a book and the book gives coordinates to the place and when you look at what it is that's there you think well is that really the same as what the author's done? No, it's not. And so I actually lost pretty much half a day today messing about with that. But at the moment I'm looking to, I believe it's Monte Civetta. It's not the view that I wanted. I wanted a, a different view for the end of the day. But because of the amount of time I've wasted with this other place, I couldn't get to where it is. Is it okay? You know what? It's kind of okay. The snow is coming. And I believe it's going to snow a bit more overnight, which is good because as you can see, there's certainly lots of snow up here. I took a picture on the way here from a place called Paso Giao and it just looked really nice. I kind of wish I'd stayed up there, to be honest, but that's actually going to come in a couple of days time. It's somewhere I've been a, a number of times, but I've never seen it like I've seen it now. It looks just winter wonderland amazing. But let me just show you the view that's here. It's just fantastic. It's why I love coming to the Dolomites. It's such a beautiful, beautiful area of Italy. It really is stunning here. It's my first time in winter and I'm sure it won't be the last time. But anyway, let's show you Monte Civetta, what I believe is Monte Civetta, and then uh, the snow that's coming. And there's a bit of sunset kind of going on, but I'm not going to get in the thing. That is the view towards Monte Civetta, I believe it's Monte Civetta. That there, I think, is Monte Civetta. 
So you can see sunsets going on over there. And there's these nice jagged typical Dolomite mountains here. It's beautiful up here in the Dolomites. Look at it. I mean, I'm supposed to be in Scotland actually as of right now, but uh, certain restrictions have curtailed that. But look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. Kind of tempted to walk across this snow here and then to better look into the valley. But I'm guessing that it's quite deep and probably going to be quite tricky to get across there. I do actually have some snowshoes which I was given by uh, the guy where I'm staying. So maybe, maybe not. But yeah, it's looking pretty nice. There's a wide angle. I've done a long lens shot of it at the moment. Do I do a wide angle? I don't know, actually. I don't know. I'll see. It's the second full day here in the Dolomites and uh, it's still looking beautiful. Yesterday I was a bit fed up but after a long drive of messing around and trying to find something that just didn't really work it's, uh, it's disheartening because you think well I could have done so many other things and I saw other things as well that were important to me but today it's actually a cloudless day today. I don't know how long it's going to stay that way, but I've come to, for me, which is a familiar place, which is a lake called, uh, it's Miserina Lake or Lago de Miserina. And normally when I come here in autumn time, you get this beautiful reflection across the lake. Now it's just completely frozen. The first uh, evening that I arrived here, I'd raced up here from the airport and there were people just walking across the lake so it's really kind of weird seeing people walking across somewhere where only three months ago you couldn't walk across so but yeah it's uh it's a different sort of technique that i'm having to employ as well because normally as i said there's a reflection what am i doing with it well i'll show you and explain what i'm doing in the next bit so there is Lake Miserina, Lago de Miserina. As you can see, there's a beautiful, beautiful mountain back there covered in snow. Now, I have been here before in autumn where the lake has been here and the mountain has actually been covered in snow, which has been really, really nice. But as you can see, now it's just completely frozen. Yes, you could walk out across it, but then you run the risk of, you think, well, is there patches of thin ice out there? I don't know. I would prefer to remain on solid ground and just be careful because it's only me here actually at the moment so what I've done is a, uh, a long lens shot as you can see there's my long lens on there doing a panorama to actually just go in a bit further to the scene there just because a three by two it kind of looks okay but it isn't really great you do really with a three by two need the reflection but in any case there you go it's, uh, it's stunning. I'm just going somewhere else now. I'm, I might film it. I don't know. Depends what it looks like up there. It's only a couple of minutes away. It's another lake. Highly likely it's frozen. But yeah, there you go. Absolutely stunning, beautiful landscapes here in northern Italy. Can't wait to see what the rest of the day brings. All I can say is I know it, that I've seen where I'm going for sunset. And yesterday it looked stupendous mountain scenery up there with all the snow everywhere. It looked amazing. So let's go to somewhere else. I've come up about five minutes from the previous frozen lake to another frozen lake. I'm actually stood on the lake here. I think I actually am, from what I remember of my uh, geography of this place. And it's looking really really nice I've been wanting to get a, a nice shot of this place actually where I am for a long time and it's kind of I've got something here and there but yeah it's quite difficult at times when you don't live somewhere to really get the the one where you're having to take a chance so there there was no cloud there's a little bit of cloud coming now but it's actually a location whereby you want the pre-dawn light rather than the dawn light here you want the dawn light so that's why I'm, I'm doing both of them at the same time the light is coming across there now on the mountain. I've got to watch it because although I'm filming a vlog and I want to show you what I'm up to, I also want that. And it's the, the light, the morning light that is raking across what is the tre chimney, the three chimneys up there is looking really nice. I'd like a bit 
more color in the cloud but hey you know what that's us photographers never really happy but that's why we keep coming back to these places so i'll show you why i've come here i'll spin the camera around and you can see what it is i've got there it's beautiful beautiful this morning that there is the tre chimney so if you're familiar with it then or you're familiar with hearing about it and seeing pictures of it the famous rock face that you'll always see is actually behind that so it is that's the back of it so you if you have to walk all the way around either this way around or this way around to actually get to see that on the my camera i've got a 50 mil tilt shift why a tilt shift because i had my 2470 on there and i thought you know what actually it's at 50 mil i've got a 50 mil tilt shift there's trees there verticals let's keep everything bolt upright and re looking really nice so maybe you can see on the back of my camera there's my composition there so there's a polarizer on the front as well so it should polarize up really nice when i uh when i've sort of obviously got it turned there it's going to take another shot there put the exposure down a little bit because uh with that white snow and the sun that's coming on it you can see that dimension there that's on the mountain it looks beautiful it looks really really beautiful what would have been nice is you know sort of like a red sort of sky but hey what can you do not a lot but that's how it goes would i come back another morning maybe maybe i don't know yet i have to see how my mornings go but um yeah that's why i come to the dolomites time and time again Yesterday I was driving up this road and out of the corner of my eye uh, this way I saw this lone tree embedded in the snow there and with all these folding layers coming down and I thought that looks quite nice quite kind of graphic and I was didn't really sort of have a moment to think well can I stop is there anywhere to stop so on my way back up this mountain pass I've had an opportunity to stop there is somewhere safe to stop and it's not actually easy going to say it's not easy here in winter stopping because a lot of the places that you would like to stop you can't stop where you would be able to stop in autumn for example because it's completely snowed in so there's not actually that many places just to pull off the road just to get stuff that you might think oh that looks awesome but anyway up there maybe what you can see behind me is that lone tree what I'm going to do is get my camera just swing it round here and then you can see on the back of my camera there what's going on with that tree so you can see maybe there's the tree there and there's these folds coming down I did another version but you can see basically that's the tree there and I just love these folds coming down here but you can see how much snow there is up here it's crazy look at this this is what I was talking about it's not that simple just to pull in so you've got this mountain road sometimes in autumn you can pull off for example on this side of the road here but here is this is okay this is okay and safe to pull off but yeah there you go look at this stunning winter scenery here absolutely beautiful it really really is compared to yesterday I feel a lot happier with what I'm getting I'm very often asked why is it that I wait for the light why do I wait to get those things why don't I just replace the sky why don't I use for example a radial filter to add in light to an image because it's not patience photography is for me about patience about waiting about reading the weather in front of you and thinking right where's the wind blowing any cloud that's in the sky that's stopping me from getting the photograph that I want and right now I've got a photograph that I've waited looking at the church clock maybe 45 minutes to wait to see what the cloud is going to do the cloud has done exactly what I want it to do and although it's half past 12 it's it's midday light this is winter and therefore the sun is a lot lower in the sky 
and the shadows are still really nice and long at this time of day. So that patience is for me really rewarding and I'm able to get something that I saw three months ago and that I didn't have an opportunity to find where could I get the photograph from, where could I stop, where was safe to stop, how could I get to a place and get elevation to get to where it is to get the picture that's behind the camera. What's the picture? Let me show you. This is the scene that I saw a couple of months ago and I thought I really want to come back and get this. So you can see, hopefully you can see there's that church there and then the mountain. Beautiful, beautiful scene here in the Dolomites. And I thought, where the heck can I park? I found somewhere and I was able to safely get to this point where I am to get this composition here. What have I had to do? Why did I wait 45 minutes? Because this cloud here, basically, if you look here, all of this, it's actually coming from this direction here. It's coming from the north, I think this is. This was sweeping across here. But earlier on, all I had was this sort of dark cloud above there and the sun was just coming down just a little bit. Look at it now. As I said, yes, I know it is midday light, but does it really matter when it's the winter? And you can see, hopefully you can see the shadows there. Nice, long shadows creating this scene. I've had to do two exposures just because of the sunlight on that snow but it may be recoverable, I don't know. I also want some definition in the clouds there. You can see that even on the GoPro there, there's definition, there's texture in the cloud. I want to retain that texture in the cloud. But there you go, beautiful scene. Absolutely been waiting a long time to get this and I've managed to get it at last. It's the beginning of the third day, third morning here in uh, the Italian Dolomites. As you can see, it's a nice brisk morning. It's, according to the temperature in the car, minus 14. That's pretty darn cold. However, unlike yesterday when I was on the top of a mountain, there's no wind up uh, actually here. So it's actually quite supportable in some respects. So last time I had something like this was Norway. Uh, two years ago, actually, nearly two years ago. So but it's quite nice. It's a nice morning. I'd like some cloud, but you know, photographers, we're never really happy with what we've got. You can see the scene behind me. Hopefully, you can. Beautiful mountain scenery. Normally, this is a this is a lake here, but it's completely frozen at the moment. Could I walk over there? Possibly, but then you have to think of your own personal safety. If you happen to come across a thin bit of ice and you go down in a drink, then not really what you want and there's nobody here to rescue me either so let me show you what I've got on the front of the camera this is what I've got at the moment the composition I've got at the moment so I'm not including much of the lake there's a tree just there so I've had to put the camera up just a little bit so it's kind of classic rule of thirds in some respects you can see you might get to see on there the sunlight is just kissing the top of these peaks just here which is quite nice because yesterday morning was it yesterday morning such a long day yesterday uh yesterday morning i think it was i didn't really have that on the peaks at all so it's quite nice to see that bit of red i'm not sure what it's going to do It'd be nice to get quite a lot of that red color up there but yeah beautiful isn't it stunning mountain scenery here i do love being in the dolomites it's an amazing amazing place to come to even when it's brutally cold but uh yeah so focal length if you're interested in all that kind of stuff which i know some people are it's a 50 mil on the front 50 mil focal length and uh there's a heliopan polarizer there because the sun rises just that way so that's why you're getting the sunlight raking across those mountains there be nice to get i said a bit more color up there i guess we will see but there's a lot of snow so that will probably take the edge off it but there you go beautiful mountain scenery here by the way just getting across here is quite interesting you can see all the snow as i just go down into the snow how deep is the snow that might give you an idea so it's about uh what 15 inches deep 
down there, the snow. It's a lot deeper in some places down here, but um, yeah, there you go. What's coming up today? Uh, a lot more, hopefully. I guess we'll see. Yesterday, though, as I, I'm just going to turn the camera back round. Yesterday, um, up the top of the mountain, I wanted to film what I was doing and also add into a tutorial that I was filming as well on panoramic photography. And I put a new GoPro battery in. It was on 98% and it just went gone, just like that. It was brutal up there. It was only probably something similar to what it is here, but flipping heck did it just, uh, did the battery life get eaten just like that, which was very frustrating. But it's the wonders of doing winter photography up in the mountains. At the moment, I'm having big problems trying to get anything filmed at the moment. So I charge up my GoPro batteries before I leave, make sure I have enough battery life, and they are just dying within less than a minute. It's extremely frustrating. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be a, a probably a vlog that you've not imagined in that I'm hoping to show you the landscape, but I can't. At the moment, what you're looking at is the feed from the back of my camera because there's nothing else that I can do. I really want to show you what I'm doing here and what I'm going to do is show you this. What's this? Well, I came here to look at uh, a church which is behind the camera which you can't see but here I noticed that the other direction from the church was all these frost covered trees and snow covered trees and I thought that looks really nice can I do anything with it so I thought well let's have a go and I got my 100 to 400 in and, and zoomed right in so at the moment as I'm filming this on my 5D Mark IV what I've got basically is it's set at around 200 millimeters so with the crop it's something like what 300 300 or so millimeters you could see those beautiful trees there what I liked with these particular trees that you're seeing now is you've got like those skeleton type uh, tree branch not tree branches the the tree trunks there where obviously the, the leaves of the and whatever else have all just sort of died away I don't know whether the frost but because there's other trees around here they, they're not like it but I just looked at those and I thought I really like those let's see what I can do so you can see what it is that I'm doing here you can see the type of framing that I've got so I'm going to get a, a picture as I roughly see it on the back of my camera because I framed it up a bit nicer than the picture actually that I've taken so yeah there you go interesting vlog in the Dolomites it's not going to plan trying to vlog with a GoPro which is just dying all the time well I seem to have got my GoPro working again because uh the cold from where I was last time. I don't know what happens with these GoPros, but uh, I certainly can't charge a GoPro battery in a car in the little amount of time that I've done it. It just seems to dissipate. But anyway, I've come outside of Brunico. Brunico is that way. And I've come here because I've always wanted to get a really good shot of the castle. And then I've got one. It's actually a very, very long lens shot in order to get it. So my lens is set I think it says the the exit data is 460 millimeters so I've got the 100 to 400 and I've got a 1.4 extender on it to, to get over to it why did I use that because at 400 it wasn't quite enough sorry as the electric bike goes past 400 wasn't quite enough and so I had to put on the extender and what I've done is I've stopped it down to s16 just because I've lost a stop of light with the extender but um, I'll just see if I can flip this round and tap the back of my GoPro make sure I can see that's what it is that I'm looking at there that's the castle there so it's a stunning view over to the castle but it is a very very long lens shot in order to actually get it so now how did I find this place I've been coming to the Dolomites for I think it's five and a half years and so I've done a lot of research on this area and so every time I go back I'm always thinking to myself do you know what I kind of love it here but there's too much to do so anyway let's carry on somewhere else
There's the end of my third full day here in the Dolomites. I'm going to end it here. There's another three days to come, so it'll be a, a two-parter, as well as a couple of other things that I've been filming up here. It's looking nice at the end of the day. Sunsets that way. Where am I? I'm at Paso Giao. Sorry for the noise. It's somebody flying a drone, and it sounds like it's broken. <laughs> what they're doing to that drone? But anyway, that way to the north is looking really nice. There's a nice panorama I'm going to do, although there's no sun direct sunlight on the mountains just the colors in the sky are looking really really nice i want to hurry up i want to get that but i want to thank you for joining me on this vlog please do comment below i know people do it's really appreciated thank you so much for sticking with me if you haven't subscribed down there click on the notification bell see you on the next vlog it might be a dolomites vlog it might be the, one of the tutorials that i'm doing we'll see in any case take care from northern italy see you folks stay safe and See you again on the next one. Goodbye.